Welcome to uh, Libertarian Counterpoint. I almost said uh, Libertarian Conspiracy because that used to be the name of it back when we had a little more fun. Um, throw all my stuff off the set here, turn my phone off. Um, and I'm going to introduce my guests uh, very briefly and then we're all going to do kind of a self-bio about what we're doing now and um, how we came to be in the Liberty Movement. So first, uh, Mark Olson, uh, founder of uh, Olson, what's the? Uh, Foundation. Olson Foundation. Uh, his beautiful wife, Pamela Olson, founder of uh, another foundation, another uh, Save Our Children California.org, which will be up live pretty quick. Uh, Mike uh, Giles, who, who uh, is a substitute teacher at this point in, in, in life, and he's going to talk about a switch he, he made in, in political and Philosophical Outlook. And my name is John Cameron. I'm a guest host this evening. Uh, currently, I am the Liberty Society Manager for uh, Pacific Legal Foundation. What that means is I'm a fundraiser. And uh, Pacific Legal Foundation uh, defends the Constitution of the United States of America against uh, basically the government, pretty much. Um, takes all its cases uh, pro bono. And so I feed lawyers for a living. Um, I came to Liberty Movement quite early in life, um, kind of a convert to uh, laissez-faire capitalism and, uh, and the idea that uh, when, when, when human beings uh, mimic nature, kind of survival of the fittest, that the, 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 uh, all humans are better and has been shown throughout the world, um, individual humans are, are invariably better too. When people are economically better off, they're, they're physically, mentally, emotionally better off. Um, and uh, that's how I came to uh, liber the libertarian viewpoint from objectivism back in, uh, when was I introduced to it? 1960-something. And uh, that's me. So, uh, Mark, you want to tell us a little bit about, about what you're doing now and then give us a, a quick read on, on, on how you came to the liberty movement? Sure. Like I said, my name is Mark Olson. Mm -hmm. I'm the uh, founder of the Olson Foundation. The foundation is making families stronger. What that is is uh, we're uh, educating, educating the, the people, the uh, the families. A lot of the families uh, they've uh, lost their way and they don't have uh, family values anymore. They don't know what's going on, and they don't. Uh, the young men that are being raised up are not uh, being taught correctly yeah. how to behave and what to. Uh, how to raise their own family, how to treat their own kids. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of uh, single mothers out there raising kids, and it's caused a, a big problem. Um, some of my background, I was an educator for a number of years, worked at a uh, trade school. Uh, I am a uh, licensed contractor, state contractor, for uh, heating, air conditioning, refrigeration. I used to teach that at the school. Mm -hmm. and I, So I dealt with a lot of these young men, ages uh, 18 to 30, mm -hmm. and they're just lost. Mm -hmm. And how did, you, how did you get to the liberty movement? I mean, well, the you... Liberty Movement was uh, pretty much uh, after the, uh, we're going to talk about it later, but the Assange dumped. Oh. Okay? Yeah. And all the uh, dirty secrets came out. Yeah. And uh, I remember, well, we'll probably talk about this later, but I remember being upset that he had dumped all that. Yeah. But then after it all came out, it all went through, and it was like, well, you yeah. know, the Republican Party's not working quite for me mm. anymore. Yeah. Okay, so I, I kind of call myself a... Uh, Indo Libba Brooklyn. <laughs> how do you want to say that? But uh, indubitably, yeah. that's how I go uh, with that. Cool. All right, and Pamela, what are you what are you doing now, and how did you come to the Liberty Movement? Well, thank you for having us this evening, John. It's our pleasure to be here. Um, I didn't think I had a second act in me. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I met uh, some incredible people at an evening uh, where Mr. Cox who ran for governor in 2016. Mm -hmm. And I got to enjoy varying viewpoints from several different conservatives. And mm -hmm. I found I didn't line up with any of them. So I met uh, Dr. Walter, and I've met Mr. Giles and other libertarians, and found that the libertarian movement not only stood on the constitutional basis, I'm an Adams, so Anything that stands closest to or upon the Constitution, I'm absolutely for, mm -hmm. uh, including self-reliance. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, being someone who is um, cursed with a disease, I'm not able to do what I used to do, which mm -hmm. was a nurse, mm -hmm. both mental and medical. Mm -hmm. um, once I couldn't do that anymore, as Mark mentioned, 
we both came to the liberty movement at about the same time. Mm -hmm. We understood that the California GOP was a paper tiger mm -hmm. waiting to go up in flames. Mm -hmm. um, liberty movement is where I found my new home cool. and some of the best people I know. Excellent, excellent. And uh, the Save Our Children, um, CA.org, which isn't, the website isn't up, but it's going to be soon. What's its focus? Now, we have eight topics, everything from child sex trafficking to legal issues with local mandates, governments, uh, codes and statutes through family law, uh, parents who are beleaguered, who are homeschoolers, um, looking into the real uh, science behind vaccines. Okay. All right. Cool. And, and uh, in the interest of time. Cool. And then Mike Giles, the man with the interesting hat and hair as long as mine used to be. Believe it or not, one day I'll bring a picture, folks, and you can see that me with shoulder length, red, curly hair. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what you're doing now and how you came to uh, be a convert from, well, I'll let you tell it. Oh, well, okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, well, I uh, went through college, um, was the standard Democrat um, educated college graduate mm -hmm. and the uh, the one thing that helped me begin was that uh, I noticed that um, the School of Education didn't teach us very much but two of their teachers actually were high school teachers mm -hmm. who had done so great and so that they they were night and day they really knew what they were doing mm -hmm. and uh, so as I went out there and started working, it took a while, but uh, I kept noticing all these teachers who were blaming, well, primarily Republicans, but they blamed anybody but themselves for failing the students, mm -hmm. which always seemed to be the poor black students, the poor white students, the poor Hispanic students. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they uh, really, pulled me, uh, we used to get together and they'd talk at noon and I'd keep my mouth shut and listen. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when I listened, I heard this kind of racism that was veiled. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I started looking elsewhere and I found the people that really cared about kids turned out to be more like the homeschool people, mm -hmm. more, um, I'll use the word conservatives, mm -hmm. libertarians people that weren't hooked in with the uh, teachers unions, mm -hmm. which run basically California schools. Mm -hmm. And um, it's basically an adult education, I mean an adult employment um, concern. Mm -hmm. And the kids are just the reason, they're like the water. Kids are the, kids are the product that employs the union workers. Yeah, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. They're the river that holds the fish and, and they mm -hmm. just flow by and nobody cares about them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I just got really tired of high fail rates for black students, high fail rates for Hispanic students, high fail rates for poor white students. Mm -hmm. And they were just as smart, they just mm -hmm. weren't being reached. Mm -hmm. Cool. So All right. Not cool, them. but yeah. thank you for the intro. Yeah. And then, I'm sorry, we got four panelists, if you, if you count me, maybe three and a half counting me. So <laughs> oh. we're going to, I got to get it moving. And uh, thank you so much uh, for your self intro. Oh, by the way, uh, you can watch this show on accesssacramento.org. Uh, it's live 8 o'clock on Thursday. I think Channel 17 here in Sacramento. Uh, it's at uh, noon on Friday and 4 a.m., my favorite time, you know, at uh, <laughs> warm beer and, no, wait, yeah, cold pizza and warm beer and, and, and a libertarian counterpoint at 4 o'clock. And I would never do that. That's what we have TiVo for. Um, <laughs> But you can also see it on YouTube. Uh, we used to promise two weeks, but I think Gail, who's uh, in the control room, Gail, um, uh, gets it up uh, on YouTube a little bit faster than that. So let's let's dive into topics. And, and the one we're going to open with is um, kind of ties all this in together. And uh, Mark's going to lead off, talk about the, the underground economy and the tyranny of licensing and barriers to business entry and... Uh, and that sort of thing, and, and with with your business, you see this stuff all the time. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I, okay. I see it all the time, what's going on in the underground economy. Um, the statistics are that uh, it makes up for 6% of our GDP. You said 60? Six. Six percent. Just six percent. No, not yeah. sixty. Six percent of our GDP. I think it's way higher than that. Uh, well, that's what they can track as best yeah. that they can, okay. right. depending on where people live and how much they spend, okay. to how much they yeah. make. And uh, the 
the licensing, the regulation that's gone on in the in the trades has caused that uh, everybody is uh, looking for ways to cut corners. Mm -hmm. We've all seen those trucks that pull up in front of Home Depot and mm -hmm. grab some workers. Mm -hmm. You know, you need some extra workers for a job, and you don't you pay them cash and you know, there's no record of them ever being employed. Mm -hmm. We also uh, see where you can do day laborers uh, through a temp agency, mm -hmm. get those as well. Or you can just have 1099 employees where you just get going, you pay 1099, so you're not paying the benefits, mm -hmm. the taxes, everything else, it's all pushed onto the guy. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, if you have to take a guy on, an employee, then now you're uh, responsible for working workman's comp mm -hmm. and everything else that goes with that. And so whatever wage you're paying him, it's costing you three times that to have now, him. Can I ask you a question? What's what's your workman's comp percentage? And I know they've done a good job, relatively, uh, in in cleaning up workman's comp costs. But uh, what percentage of of uh, hourly wage uh, are you paying in workman's comp? So if some, you're paying somebody thirty bucks an hour, what are you paying on them for it's workman's double. comp? It's double. It's another thirty bucks. Another thirty bucks. Yes. Gee, what? Geez, Pete. So. Uh, and that's for an experienced worker. If the guy is new. Yeah. Okay, he costs three times his hourly wage. And workman's comp insurance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And because for, he's more likely to get injured. Yeah, and for roofing, mm. it's even higher. Yes. Which is why I don't. I'm not pointing any fingers, ladies and gentlemen. But if you see a crew tearing a roof off, mm. um, I'm willing to bet that not very many of them um, that English is a, a uh, their first language, and I'm willing to bet that. Uh, yeah, I'm willing to bet that they're at risk on that roof, uh, because if you're a roofer and, and you have to pay workman's comp, then then you're, just on the tear off, you're losing money from the get go. You're, and it's you're losing it. So uh, yeah. any truck that's out there working, you're supposed to have your contractor's license on Display. any yeah. kind of oh on the truck. Yeah. Yes, on the truck, on your business required card, to. anything. You are required to have that. Yeah. Oh. So if you see somebody working a job site and there's no CDL number on it, yeah. okay, they are out of compliance. So I'm, I want to ask this question. Is, is, is um, well, just I want to throw out a, a statistic. Uh, in 1950, the Brookings Institute did a study, and 5% and, uh, of the jobs in America in 1950 required some sort of licensing. Now it's 30%. And, and this is, I'm just going to throw out to everybody. Do you think this is uh, uh, the interests of the public? are being served by this licensing, or is it basically uh, preventing competition and pushing costs for doing everything through the roof? Which one is it? Well, uh, can I just put in briefly here? Oh, yes. Um, just for everybody. In the, in the classrooms, I see uh, all sorts of uh, girls doing amazing things with each other's hair um, because we're not teaching as much as we used to, so they have time for that. But there's uh, black girls are doing this incredible braiding job, yeah. and they're 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 years mm -hmm. old. And um, but if they wanted to get a, a a way to earn money by being a hair mm -hmm. braider, I think they'd have to um, thousand hours of yeah they have to go to a school that costs six thousand mm -hmm. dollars and do, teaching them what they already know. Yeah. <laughs> and so they they're just locked right out right there. That's one example. May I back and bookend you on that one? Some licensing standards must absolutely be in place. Which ones? Doctors, oh, yeah, nurses, yeah, yeah. EMTs, exactly. firefighters, mm -hmm. okay, LEOs. Special licensing and education is absolutely paramount. Even within our scientific and biological research and studies that promote new treatments and promote new medications, that needs to stay at a higher standard. Well, right I'm, now, our standards are a little too it, it low. It should be actually. raised, I bet. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disagree, but I'm not going to jump in right now. I'll just sit here and disagree on what I'd like to see from a libertarian standpoint. And that's why you never want to have two libertarians speak at an event because they're going to disagree with each other. Well, exactly. Uh, uh, on, on that, uh, with the, the licensing and the permits, yeah. um, I don't have a problem with it. They just didn't cost so much. Yeah. Okay. Well, what about I, I, the barriers, barriers to entry? I mean, and, and this, uh, this is kind of my pet peeve. Uh, if you're a young black man, you brought, you brought up the subject of minorities, you have a one in nine chance of going to prison. And if you're in prison, it means you have a felony on your record. And if you have a felony on your record, all these jobs, is 30% of the jobs that require licensing, you're not going to get licensed for. You're not going to become a licensed contractor. You're not going to be able to be uh, RN, LVN, EMT, firefighter, policemen, all the rest of that stuff. So basically what's happening is um, 
you're dooming those people to work, uh, never be able to, to have their own business and, and do it like you do, post a bond, can't get a bond, all the mm -hmm. rest of that. So, um, and, and so I don't want to dominate the conversation, but... Uh, yeah, they're always going to be working for somebody else. Always. They've been, if there's trouble with that, they're always working for somebody else, you can't get them bonded. You try to hire a guy, yeah. and you can't get them bonded. Yeah. And if, this you, could if you be did some shoplifting thing back when he was a kid, right? Yeah. Or These maybe, background checks go back to when you were 12 years old now. Yeah. Wow. Okay? They go back oh, that I'm far. Oh, I'm in trouble. They're going to come, up, they come oh. up with everything. I knocked over somebody's coffee. Was that closed? And if oh. you lied on your application, oh. Oh, oh, said you sorry, didn't have that. We're just making a mess here, folks. I know. Just, we normally <laughs> pretend like we got this <laughs> under control, but okay. today we're not. Okay. That's all right. John's all right. just tearing up the place. Yeah. <laughs> Wait till I get to the bar. Later. Anyway, yeah, yeah. so... Uh, you know, mixed bag. We, yeah. we understand that, that uh, some, you know, in some areas there need to be licensing and all the rest of that. And, and my, my disagreement would not be that there doesn't need to be some kind of licensing in, in some instances. But I, I think most of the time when you see these licensing agencies, um, and I'll give you an example, you're in the health, you're in the health business. Somebody will go through a uh, medical school in a foreign country that's every bit as good as or even better than the crazy way we train doctors, sleep-deprived doctors here in the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, and come to the United States having successfully performed open-heart surgery. And they'll have to basically start nearly at ground zero here and get licensed again. And you can't tell me that that's anything other than a barrier to competition. So standard yeah. The, the way we're doing it now, no. And does anybody in this room think that 30% of the jobs in the U.S. need to have some kind of license? You brought up the hair braiding, uh, hearing aids, because now you can, you can, the hearing aids are so sophisticated, you can put them in your ear and they do the testing that an audiologist used to have to do mm -hmm. and actually better. Um, I mean, you go on and on and on. Uh, people can do eye exams online that are every bit as effective <laughs> as, as what you're going to see an optometrist, but it's illegal at very state to state, county to county, city to city. And all it does, in my opinion, in many cases, is uh, prevent competition and keep people out of the workforce, especially poor, young, black, Hispanic, um, minority groups. Mm -hmm. You're talking about single family homes. Mm -hmm. who've, who've basically been forced into a life of crime by their environment mm -hmm. and by crappy teachers. But anyway. Um, well, like I said, I, I believe everybody should be licensed. You yeah. need to prove that you know your craft. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it could be a simple test or something like that. It doesn't be a contractor's test or something mm -hmm. like that, but it's a simple test that you know your craft. It shouldn't cost nine million dollars to do no. it. Yeah, no. you know, yeah. it should cost twenty bucks or something. And you right? shouldn't have to go through the, the and you union, have to go through all the union authorized Like you talk about the foreign do doctor coming in, right? Yeah. They should go and they should test him. Yeah. Yep. And if he's good to go, let him go. Yeah. So yeah. here's here's the thing the government do Governor Ducey did that I like, and he signed a bill to make uh, basically this licensing uh, have some reciprocity. Um, we're, we're spending a lot on this first one here, but it's real important. It's an interesting um, topic. Yeah, because, yeah, um, you know, the economy's a mess. Uh, if you're, you know, a, a LVN or an RN in California and you pass the boards here, instead of having to go retake the boards in, in Arizona, you become a four-year RN. Yeah, four-year RN. Yeah. So, uh, and, and uh, you know, you, there are places that, graduate RNs quicker, they don't have to get put BSN on their name, but what this is do does basically is prevent people being able to move from one place to another to take a job. In the past, people in this country followed jobs. They would move where the jobs were, mm -hmm. and now with all this licensing, they can't do it. So let's move on. Uh, George Will, uh, Mike, I'm going to throw this one out to you, said uh, socialism uh, has become a classification that's uh, no longer really means anything because we are so socialized. Were we always that way and now people are just coming out of the closet or what's going on here? <clears throat> wow. Um, yeah, it actually feeds right in. It's encumbering with, right, what yeah. we've been talking about. I think, uh, didn't um, Karl Marx say something like um, to each according to his needs, from each according to his, well, um, from anyway. each according to his ability, to each according to his needs. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I yeah. messed that up. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> no, you're fine. But that yeah. was a very, very, very fantastic, good sales line 
um, because uh, it it uh, uh, slowly developed that where that became the greatest power um, when it became it, it took over the old Russian Empire mm -hmm. and became the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. That's when uh, they never told me this in college, but I found it out later. The Great Hunger mm -hmm. in 1932. Forty million. Yeah, well, they, yeah, he killed 40 million, mass murdered 40 million people, and uh, based on uh, quality of, of equipment, he had to buy Caterpillar tractors, because if they were going to kill a village uh, or a town of 10,000 men, women, boys, girls, and babies, you had to bury them. Mm -hmm. and, and their the, tractors wouldn't do the job. Yeah, their, their tractors were unreliable, so they used Caterpillar tractors to bury all the people they, they murdered in that and particular that's area. that's what people want to do now, ladies and gentlemen. Huh. Not necessarily kill people, but adopt that wonderful economic model that had that happen. So um, I'm, I'm not a big fan of environmentalism, even though I love the environment. And, uh, and in the past, uh, environmentalists used to, well, socialists would hide behind environmentalism, and we call them we call them watermelons. They're green on the outside and red on the inside. Now they've stripped <laughs> off the green cover, and they're just admitting to being red that, yeah, you have more than I do. I need it. You have so much that we can take some of yours, and you don't want really care because you got so much, and we're going to give it to all of our friends, and I'll be the one that decides that. So that's basically, in a nutshell, what socialism is. George Will is... In his article, made a very good point. He talked about uh, the fact that, the, that that there is so much government in this country transferring so much money around that we really could look in the mirror and say we're already socialist. What do you think of that? Are we already socialist to a large extent in this country? I, Anybody? I believe huh. with the rise of AOC, yeah. without using any of the acronyms, we all know who AOC is. Yeah. Um, even Ms. Pelosi, the Speaker of the House. Uh, is shying away from the very blunt and very open way in which AOC and her gaggle of 13, 17, however many of them there are. It's uh, a, what is a coven of witches? How many is in a coven? 13. Oh, I'm sorry. That, that, was, in, that was politically incorrect <laughs> to say that. That's okay. We're yeah. libertarians. We don't have to be PC. Um, they're outright selling millennials, which is my children's age group, are mm -hmm. millennials. Free stuff. Mm -hmm. You go ahead and turn everything over. You never have to worry about a bill again. We're going to give you a monthly check. We're going to tell you where to live. You don't even need a car because we're going to put you in micro coffin apartments with micro coffin little jobs, and you're going to live and die in the same spot. Okay. Well, so, socially, social equality, it's, it's a new weapon for them. And it's absolutely ridiculous. Oh, yes. That reminds me when you guys just said that. There's this movie called Brazil. Oh, it's, we've seen it. It's... It, talk, it talks about exactly what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, I think it's crazy. It's, it's insane. Um, it's an older movie. It's from the 80s. Yeah. Especially with the one mom who constantly gets the facial. Um, yeah. She redoes her face until she's a complete young woman, and then they bury all the old flab and flesh of her <laughs> old life. It's very odd. But, but the, uh, the uh, kind of to, to meld these together, um, all, regarding your uh, subject, um, I just would wanted to throw in buildings full of bureaucrats. Mm. Buildings full of bureaucrats need jobs. Mm. And to police, you know... Um, they have victims to help out, right? Yeah, they, they have to... They have to uh, and uh, if, if you're on the dole or whatever <laughs> you, they used to call it, um, you have to... And your caseworker wants to meet with you, you better show up mm. exactly when they say or they'll take away your section eight or whatever mm. so they have this whole group of people that are under their thumb under their control and friends of mine who've um, retired from state service california state service spontaneously speak about the contempt mm. with which these buildings full of bureaucrats uh, feel to their bones about the rest of the people out here mm. The masters uh, con or have contempt for their slaves. I'm shocked by that. I'm going to try to talk about a case in, I think i got two minutes or three oh. minutes, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, time flies when you're talking a lot uh, and having fun. Um, so, um, and this, actually, we already kind of covered the non-union stuff sure. uh, and union stuff. So I think I'm going to skip to Joe Robertson. There's a, there's a case that uh, Pacific Legal Foundation took. 
fellow named Joe Robertson, and he's, uh, he just passed away from a stroke, 80 years old. They threw him in prison and fined him $130,000 for, for uh, building some ponds on his property in a ditch uh, for uh, fire prevention because he knew that he couldn't depend on, on, on the government uh, paid firefighters, either you know the state or at the federal level to protect his land, so he did it himself. And they decided to turn his ditch into a water of the United States uh, and uh, therefore he was violating all sorts of environmental regulations and threw this guy in prison. And uh, so he passed away. Um, the, the case got to the Supreme Court and they kicked it back to the Ninth Circuit saying, uh, take another look at it because you made a mistake. All right, so, um, so what do you think? Do you think that uh, if, if uh, real quick, uh, we'll do we'll do a vote here. I know I'm pushing this, but we 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 had so much fun talking, we lost track of time. Um, if somebody builds a pond on their property so that they can fight fires with it, and a ditch to help uh, move some of that water around, how can that possibly be a navigable water? How can that? Do you think that's a misinterpretation of uh, of the meaning that Congress uh, had when it when it passed? Uh, Clean Water Act back in the 70s. What do you think? You think that's that House of Bureaucrats kind of overreaching, mm -hmm. well, taking this Navy veteran who stroked out from all the stress? Well, that well, most to definitely. Navy. You know, did he block any waterways? No. No. Okay, so it's 40 it, miles from the water. It flowed into the pond, flowed out of the pond on the other yeah. end, continued on its way. Yeah. There's no problem with that. Yeah, you can't. How did that turn into navigable water? There's well, no anyway, problem. I think I think we're getting ready to close down the show. I mean, why didn't you uh, just put water towers? We got up? one minute, <laughs> so. <laughs> What's, um, Okay. You know, water towers are a little more expensive to do. But he wouldn't have got in trouble with the EPA then. Yeah. Well, the, the, the I think they would have figured out a way. The ponds mm -hmm. were so that the trucks could fill up faster and go yeah. out and fight fires. Yeah. But if he buried the water were. towers, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, then he can get into it. Yeah. All right. Well, on that note, <laughs> I want to I want to thank our guests. You need um, to call a contractor. That's what yeah. it was. Mark Olson. <laughs> um, maybe you know the ins and out. Pamela, uh, thank you. Uh, Mike Giles, and uh, I deserve no thanks because I'm the one that lost track of time. Oh, you so did good. thank you so much for, for tuning in. Our thousands of viewers, the phones are lighting up out there, folks. Cool. Hey. If we had phones and we had lights, what they'd be those, lighting up. Those red and lights. on that note, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in, and, and you'll be able to check this show out on, on YouTube in probably about a week. And we appreciate the heck out of it and look forward to having you as our guests in the House of the Libertarian Straight Thinking here in the future. Take care and have a wonderful evening.